Hi, Sacred Soul family. It's Jenna Pinkstone signing on. I have a sensitive topic to cover today. It's a channeling that just came through to me. It was, it was very powerful. It was healing while at the same time intensely painful. And that is a pain that I want to attempt to heal today with respect to um, mothers who have lost and fathers who have lost a baby to SIDS. SIDS being Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. I don't know why this came over me so powerfully. I've never lost a baby to SIDS. I have spoken to women who have, um, not recently, but this came through uh, very, very clearly that this, uh, so I'm going to close my eyes and I will share a light language healing later on in the video, but I, I need to share some wisdom in terms of what is happening whenever a baby is lost to SIDS. So doctors and healthcare providers do not understand with respect to what causes SIDS. There have been many different studies done throughout the decades of what exactly is happening. I remember whenever I was in the birthing center with my own child who was, um, she was struggling, struggling to thrive. She did not breathe immediately upon um, being birthed by me. It was a very painful, very difficult 37 hour labor process for us both. And when she came out, she had breathed in fluid and they had to work on her immensely uh, focused in order to help her to breathe. It was almost as if she had decided that it was all too much and she did not want to breathe and, and she simply wanted to re-enter that ether of the collective from whence she had come, if that makes sense. And this was, I was revisiting this pain within my heart and an entire download just came through with respect to why babies cry, what they call colic. Colic and SIDS are both words that the healthcare community gives to phenomena that they do not understand that my orb of understanding has expanded with respect to these concepts specifically. So colic, what the baby is crying about, no one knows, right? You, you hug the baby, you rock the baby, you feed the baby, the baby has changed, they have slept, but for some reason they continue to cry. Some babies experience colic, others do not. What this is, is a soul expression. This is the baby's first soul expression of being acclimated and being introduced to being an individual. And it is very difficult, it is very hard, it is disorienting, and it is a challenge that some meet with some discomfort and some uh, form of resistance, if you will. The differing personalities of each soul expression will determine whether or not a baby expresses their discomfort through this process of claiming themselves as an individual because it hurts. It is not easy to separate from the one source from whence we all are apart. It, it, is, it is an illusory separateness because we are all still connected. But as we already know, the human experience, the experience of being born is actually a construct, if you will, a merging into one individual expression for the purpose of an experience here on earth. And this is hard. We entered here for a reason. We chose the life that we will lead. But as babies being born, we forget we forget what that choice was, even though we made it of our own free will before we actually came, okay? And so this disorienting process of realization that I was at once connected and the mother's womb actually facilitates 
a semblance of that connectivity. It is the next stage because the baby is an individual there, but it is not so jarring. It is not so traumatizing to be an individual while still intricately connected to mother in both body, mind, spirit, emotional bodies. All of these energies expressed in the mother are felt by the baby as they are one together while the baby is in the womb. So this is a semblance of that soul expression still being connected to source that we are all surging towards. We are trying to find that connection again we know it is there. The, the proof in the pudding, so to speak, is all of the different cultures all across the world seek some type of spiritual awakening practice. And it may be done through a world religion. Those are provided to the people as a way to fill that void. And it is not to say that those are wrong. They are not. There is so much truth within the scriptures of these religions that were held past from the past. However, it um, I will say the powers that should not be um, at times in certain gatherings have harnessed these world religions as a way to steal your power. That is an entirely separate channeling. I'm going to energetically move myself back. I am, I am repositioning myself in the stance and the, the, in the orb of understanding that is describing what it is I came here to say today. And that is whenever a baby is born and they are struggling to thrive, Sometimes it may be that one of their organs is not completely developed. And this is something that modern medicine can assist us with. What a blessing. There are some times that a baby fails to thrive and there is no real discernible reason why that we can pinpoint here in the physical world. And there have been studies. I will do my best to find them and leave that link in the comments, but I know these studies have been done. I have seen them. I have discussed them with my own midwife team and those actually measured the heartbeat of the baby mix uh, and, and they cross reference those to the heartbeat. It doesn't have to be the mother. It most typically is simply, you know, for the biological uh, connection that they share, but it can be any adult parent-like figure that whenever a baby is first born, if they are skin to skin, and any midwife will tell you this, that skin to skin is a very powerful physical connection that facilitates an emotional body connection, which actually roots, I believe, what I have seen roots that baby's sacral chakras here in the physical world and gives it grounding because remember it has just come from the ether of the other where right uh, of the everywhere of the other where of the other side from where we all came and they need rooting here in this earth to understand that they are here now, to understand this is where they belong, this is what they chose, and that comfort provided by the skin-to-skin -skin contact that, that the parent's heartbeat and the baby's heartbeat, when matched together, when given close proximity to one another, both in the physical and the emotional, where they are inter, intertwined just inexplicably this helps them to sync with our heartbeat, ladies and gentlemen. Their heartbeat syncs with the parents. Just innately, their, their heartbeat syncs and this skin-to-skin -skin contact. This is something I have seen that will actually offset what causes SIDS to occur in some cases, I will not say in all, in some cases where they cannot discern a reason why that baby 
could not stay alive, no organ failure, no any kinds of um, premature complications. There's just no reason why usually that baby was not firmly rooted here in this world, okay? It was ready to go back. It wanted to go back. Perhaps it was too much. Perhaps they, they got here and realized, no, a, 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 different, a different circumstance. It, it will, and, and please, please don't hold any guilt surrounding this concept. I, I am not here to guilt anyone because I believe that anything that happens, believe me, I have lost. I have lost people in this world that I went over and over again over the circumstances surrounding their death, just searching for something I could have done differently. And what I have come to discover is that there is nothing that I should have done differently. What should have happened, happened for me to discover what I have in that learning experience. It was for them to discover in their learning experience. I mean, it wasn't completely independent of me. I had an, an interaction, I had a choice that I made and that was part of the experience I was meant to have, as was it for them. I know though that babies that are that are left away from the heartbeat. I believe in this study that I saw the, the proximity from the heartbeat of the parent to the heartbeat of the child should be no more than six feet when a baby is just born. And I know that the powers that should not be here in our Western society teach that a baby should be self-soothing, should be away from the parent's bed, should be away in their own crib, perhaps in an entirely different room. How then is that baby's heart to sink with the heart of another who loves it? How are they supposed to feel firmly rooted in this world? I ask you, our own amount and level of discernment should be used here in, in approaching and understanding what it is that keeps a baby rooted long enough to realize that they are an individual that chose here and that they feel secure and collected and at ease with that choice to be here. I know that the powers that should not be teach Western society to a certain way of putting their baby to sleep that involves not co-sleeping in the bed alongside them. What was shown to me as a new mother who I ascribed to all that I was, I was told at one point in time. We had a crib set up for my child that was born. We spent an ample amount of money on it. And my baby never slept one night in that crib because of the wisdom that my midwives showed me when my baby was failing to thrive. And when I synced my heart to hers that first night, they explained to me that she will do better if you sleep skin to skin with her. And when I asked, what if I roll over on her? They asked me, are you on drugs? I said, no, you've been with me for 37 hours while I delivered this baby. No, I'm not on drugs. I had no drugs during this painful, traumatizing birth. And they said, have you been drinking any alcohol? I said, no. I was exasperated with these questions. And then they looked me in the eye and they said, you will not hurt your baby. You've worked very hard for this and you know within you what your baby needs. This was a soul shaking moment for me and I knew that it set the precedent, it set the stage for that which I was supposed to discover later, which actually imbued in me in this day, this day, I realized these babies that are being lost to us in this world, they're not lost to us. 
They're simply rejoining the collective from where they just came. They were not given the tools to help acclimate here on earth with us. They felt so separate from that unconditional love that they innately knew existed and they chose to return. And there is nothing wrong with that. And there is nothing wrong with us not being given that wisdom so as we could keep them here. It hurts. It is so painful to lose, to have that perceived loss. But what we must do is realize what we have gained, actually. Hun charai kai nai se. Shade kai nai se kai aso. Hun shade kai nai se. Hun shade kai nai so nai so. Hun shade kai nai se. Hun shade kai nai so. powerful. I thank you for joining me for that channeling. If you would like to connect with me further or simply share your experience within this entire concept and imbue the orb of knowing and the orb of understanding of the collective via me as a conduit, I would very much appreciate you reaching out. My name is Jenna Pinkstone and I can be reached on Instagram as well as Facebook. Please feel free to send me a personal email Jenna Pinkstone at gmail.com. I thank you so much. This is Jenna Pinkstone signing off. <laughs>